we know you've been in education um, 35 plus years. You've had a ton of different roles, but if you can go back to that very first year of teaching and give yourself some advice, what would that be? My advice would be to really put the students in the center of critical thinking and problem solving. Um, when I first started teaching in the late 80s, there wasn't any internet. If kids needed to get information, the only access they really had was their textbooks, uh, an adult um, physically going to the library and accessing the information. But uh, in, in spite of those kind of dynamics, um, I, I found myself kicking myself about five years into the career of like, how come I didn't like put them at the center a little bit earlier? So I, I started teaching where the common pedagogy was teachers get up and share knowledge and you work with kids and you uh, have them do their work and you give them feedback and make sure that they've got competency and know it. But it was about uh, five years into teaching in a middle school science classroom when I realized, you know, I'm giving out these labs once a week and it's just a recipe. Right. You give them the list of materials, all the steps, what data collect, what to observe, what to look for. Then at the very end, we ask them to write a conclusion and there's only one right answer. Hey, because we led you through absolutely everything. Right. And I thought that that's not science and it's really low level thinking. Mm. And so my my first step five years in, and, and again, I wish I had known it my first year and, and started to dig into that the first year, but I'm like, I'm taking off the list of materials. I'll let them read the lab and say, hey, what is it that I need? And if they realize they need to take measurements and one group lab group chooses a beaker and one chooses a cylinder, and the cylinder gets better results. I'm like, hey, we got a good learning lesson here. What what do you need to do in the way of accuracy and precision for for your lab results? And and then I and then from there I just kind of kept developing it a little bit more of um, uh, okay, well let me give them the concept and let them create. What are the steps I'm going to need? And what are the tools I'm going to need? What materials will I need? And and I I, I think um, it, it just took me seven years to get there and the process of getting kids to really figure out how do I frame it where they're the ones that are doing the decision making, deciding what needs to be looked at, what questions need to be answered and how they're going to come about it instead of me being the one that's kind of spoon feeding everything. And um, I'm, I, I think with the advent of the internet and seeing that grow over uh, its development, kids have access to a lot of information now. And so it's a little bit easier, I think, in today's setting to kind of start there of like, hey, we have all this information. What do we do with it? Um, but it, it's something I wish I had really uh, grounded in myself my my first year uh, teaching. Well, that that is like, it, there is that, like we have access to all the information in the world. So schools need to focus more on developing wisdom right? Yeah. People know what to do with information. And you and I were talking about this before we got on the podcast. It's not that we shouldn't teach information. It's not that we shouldn't teach content, but what you do with the content then really does matter. Cause I think there's sometimes, well, you don't need to know dates. You don't need to know time. People's like, no, actually those things are, are good to know. Um, mm -hmm. but what you do with that information, that's, that's really, cause like I, we, everyone has access to the information. So how, you know, and not all information is good either. And we got to kind of be able to, that's why wisdom is so important. So.